to see so many women here. Um, my name is Nana Kaka. Um, I've been a petroleum engineer, especially with the subsurface department in Tala Oil for the last 10 years until last year. Um, just to give you a heads up, I'm a chemical engineering graduate out of the University of Birmingham. Um, I worked in US military contracts in Laguna, New Mexico for about three years as a process engineer before going on to become a Hollywood actress. Um, <laughs> so um, my credits in Hollywood are like CSI New York, the last Star Trek they shot, life, I have like a, an entire resume and my driving factor behind that is Ugandan women, we grew up seeing beautiful women out of the US as light skinned. So I came home at the height of all these newspaper clippings that talked about how exciting Uganda's discovery, the hydrocarbon discovery was, right? So my uncle Ellie comes home for dinner and then he's like, wait, Nana, do you have a job? I was like, yeah. He's like, but you study chemical engineering? I'm like, yes. He says, ah, I can't and take you to Tyro Camp. Come look at this girl. So I go, I do my interview. I did it with a guy called Hans Myers. And he had just got him off a British Airways flight the night before. So I walk in with my resume and the first statement says Hollywood actress, blah, blah, blah. So this guy looks at me and says, wait, I just saw you in that movie. He's just not that into you. I was like, oh crap, no, that was it. And he goes, you're joking. So he goes to YouTube, finds it. And then he sits there and says, so why are you in the technical arena when you could possibly do that? And women being women, I don't know if you get to that point in your life where you're no longer the girl that you were. Yeah? So there's this challenge. There's only one other girl called Pamela Tungisha. She's on Chiga by the way, she wasn't playing. She was like literally because her or me. So we walk in and they push us against each other and they do this whole questionnaire. And then at the end of it, she walks up, we walk out there, she looks at me and she says, ha, I cannot compete with a Hollywood actress. So I looked at her, I said, you know, we're different. We are very different. I bet you anything they're going to hire the two of us because we're the only engineers at this precise moment that are female. I didn't hear from Tower Oil for about four months. I was like, okay, I've blown it. Then they called us out of the blue. The first person I saw at Human Resources was Pamela. I said, also you, I said, also me. So we are all excited. I've got this baby. This baby's like six months. I live at my mother's, by the way, because I wasn't about to like, try and find childcare. I'm very resourceful as a woman, so I moved in with mommy. And mommy did the whole childcare thing. She thought I was doing her favor. So I go into Talo, and I'm expecting a desk job, guys. Like, literally just sit in the office and talk intelligent stuff all day, you know? So they drive us to Kajansi two days later and say, you know, you're boarding the flight to go to Burundi to really get a feel of what it's like to be a surface engineer. So I'm like, yeah, I'm good like that. So I put my afro nicely, scarf, you know, I'm, I'm going out there to show them, you know, how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I arrive at Burundi Airstrip. I don't know how many of you have been to Hoima, but 10 years back, it was grass. So we land and then they take us to the site. At the time it was in Yege. And at that time the area, the, the, the development was called Burisa. So we get there and then the site foreman says, we don't have accommodation for women. Ladies, it's not for the faint of heart. You are on that rig 24 hours. Pamela is a reservoir engineer. Me on the subsurface side, I'm production. Okay, so I basically assess how much is recoverable out of the ground using whatever we have, whether it's the characteristics of the oil, the viscosity, that sort of thing, basically. So we're testing, we get, we're drilling, we go on this site, um, they get, finally they take us out of the car, they put us in a, a reaper container. You know those uh, containers they ship stuff in? They have managed to get their hands on one, Drilled out a few windows, a few doors, placed a toilet that could actually drain that stuff right out. And then they make each one of us those metal beds from school. Who knows them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like we had one mirror. I, I tell you. And <laughs> being on the website is so not sexy. The overalls alone, the hard hats, the boots, the scorching sun, the ability to prove yourself against the men. 
And remember, this was actually, we came in on a higher rank than the drilling people. So you literally, they will come to you and say, this is happening. Now, Uganda has no production history. So you couldn't exactly recall them and then to say it happened and well, A, B, C, and D, and this was done, and B, P, and we changed A, B, C. No, Google was your friend. Google was your friend. And we have this field called Mangala in Rajasthan, in India, that has the same characteristics as a lot of the work fields here. So literally, one time we drilled Chibogole. This is an example. We drilled Chibogole. We were well testing it. Chibogole 3. We're well testing it. Everything is done at the completion. We're good to go. We turned on Chibogole. It was one of the most successful well tests ever done in Bulisa. So that one I can take credit for. I'm not going to lie. I'll take credit. looking at the little things. Like the gentleman said, men look at the macro picture. They're more willing to take risks at the cost of life, sorry, but at the cost of life and you know, we'll fix it when you know, stuff happens. And if there are three of them, they're like literally banging each other's fists like, we got this. Would you like to go get a coffee? <laughs> you know, so it's really one of those things where women, we're very, very, very instrumental in this process that's happening in Uganda now. We're instrumental on the areas that these things are, these wells are located in, like you say, Mackison Falls. When you look at the development that's Tilenga now, alone there's um, a well, a, a field called uh, Jobi, Jobi One. The whole thing, I think it's got about over 100 wells. And they're trying to drill them starfish wise, have one completion come through but access the reservoirs in an octopus kind of manner. But we have yet to understand the impact on the environment. If spillage occurs, half of this stuff, yes, environmental studies have been done where migration of animals occur. But understand that once you put these machines in the park, the vibrations are far reaching than actually you, than actually you crossing these things. The measures to counteract spillage or hazardous waste are still in their infancy stages. We're so focused on producing Aiden Hebe was the CEO of Talo at that time. The reason people didn't sit with him, they were frightened of him. But me being me, by the way, if you've met my dad, you grew up with that man, very little frightens you. So I'm sitting there and I'm telling him about Uganda and how frustrating it is to have a vision for this asset and how Ugandans have to be involved and how the Talo office here is filled with foreigners who think they can do social impact assessments. And if, you know, I'm venting. I'm having the time of my life. And the thing is, I talk a lot and he's quiet. I'm like, it's Christmas. One week later, I get called up to the third floor at Chiswick Park. And I walk into the boardroom and he introduces himself. I'm like, eh. He gets up from his chair and says, ladies and gentlemen, this is Nana, those that don't know her. Nana, kindly take over my chair and tell them exactly what you told me. I'm like, say what? <laughs> I start thinking, would a dentist appointment get me out of this? You know, you start getting really creative, like cramps. If I say cramps, we're going to all be like. So I think to myself, you know what? I might as well leave with a ban because I'm Nana, you know, I'm exit with a. <laughs> will be much better than just making away. Changes started happening. Not because I was really confrontational, but I thought, you know, someone needs to speak up, even if it's just the janitor. Because I do all my issues. Is that the new word in this Iranian? Yeah, my issues, you know? I do own who I am. I do speak if I feel the need is there. But we cannot be individuals, ladies. There's only two of us that I know right now that have enough from the operator sector because we had our counterparts in the government of Uganda that I think are at a level that we can actually be in charge of this asset, Pamela Chomisha and I, and I took a break. Okay, don't blame me for that, but she's out there doing what she must. But we need to encourage our people to take the risk. The reality is that as a woman, you will sacrifice. You will be in places you don't want to be. We're living in a generation where young women want to be in the comfort. They want to appear beautiful all the time. You have to understand that when you choose this, you choose engineering. 
You will sacrifice, but you will travel to places you never envisioned. You will find parts of yourself that are stronger than anyone told you. Engineering for me is taking nothing and making it long-lasting, impactful, historical. Because as engineers, we sit there and we dream. We build highways.